reporting on um, William and Catherine at the time, do, do you think do you think reporting of of, of, of royal couples has, has changed since then, or it, it changed since Diana and Charles, and then to Catherine and William, didn't it? I think it has changed, um, you know, a great te- a, a great deal. Um, some would say for the better. Uh, you have to remember as well that when the royal women came, uh, or women came into the royal family, like Diana and the Duchess of York, Sarah, Sarah the Duchess of York, um, they were just thrown in. They were they were not, not, not given any help or anything at all. The difference between them and Catherine and uh, Meghan was immense. You know, Catherine was helped as well. Andrew. Uh, uh, Andrew, sorry, um, um, William uh, made it clear right at the start, don't mess her about. And he's telling these royal aides, don't mess her around, you know, help her. And so he put his foot down, unlike Charles with Diana, unlike Andrew with Fergie. And so it was the same help that Meghan received as well. Now you got Meghan, we know that there were stories around about the Queen offering Lady Susan Hussey, one of her ladies in waiting at the time, to help show her the ropes. She was an American. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think everybody was conscious what happened with the last American who tried to come into the royal family. That ended in an abdication. Um, we don't want to, you know, we wanted to give this girl a chance. She had everything, really. She was American. She um, uh, was a, an actress. Um, she was a mixed race. Um, uh, so she had all the good... And she was good-looking. Let's not, you know, I mean, let's not make any bones about it. She was she was a cracking-looking girl. So she had all the right attributes to be a good member of the royal family. And she blew it at the end. And, you know, Catherine hasn't blown it. Look where Catherine is now. I know she's battling cancer just like the king, but she's been a huge, huge asset to that royal family you know, given given what's been going on for the last 20 years. Well, William and Catherine's um, relationship and, and, and marriage is one of the rare success stories over the last 30 or 40 years, you yeah. know, along with Charles and Camilla, which yeah. has, you know, been a, been a wonderful marriage since they've been together. It's one of those ones that have gone, gone really well. Do you think, from your reporting experience or from what you've seen as well, whether Meghan or Catherine were treated differently or whether the, the two marriages and, and relationships because because obviously you pointed out that Meghan and Harry got together really quickly. Um, we were asked to, you know, the journalists were asked to step back a little bit and when Catherine and William got together. W- w- were the two of the two women that married into the into the, the royal family marrying these princes, were they treated differently by journalists and, and by the public? I don't think they were. Not at the start. I don't think they were at all. Um, uh, I think, as, as, as I said earlier on, you know, when you saw Meghan with Harry when they were out and about, you know, the crowds were 10, 12 deep. It was back to the good old days of, you know, royal walkabouts. It was fantastic. Um, it only started to go wrong, you know, when you you started to hear that, there was a few strops being thrown by Meghan. Did she make Catherine cry? Did she make Charlotte cry? Did she... I mean, you've got to accept as well that any bride's going to be right up there. The nerves are going to be, you know, sh- razor sharp. So you've got to take that into account. But I, I think it all went wrong when they decided that they were going to up sticks and go. I think it's just that simple. Could you ever see a world where... The Sussexes, um, well, Harry and Meghan, um, you know, are lauded in the same way that, that William and Catherine are, that they're, a, that they're an integral part of the royal family and, and, and people, you know, really, really love them in the same way they did for William and Catherine. I think that ship has sailed. I think they were lauded at, at one time. I think, you know, there was great hopes for the pair of them coming into the royal family. Uh, you know, and, and given that, uh, you know, the problems that she had with her own father, that the King, then Prince of Wales, walked her halfway down the aisle uh, as well, was, 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 was really touching. I would, can't believe it could have happened for Diana or Sarah Ferguson. Um, so th- I think she was given every help and every everything that she could possibly have to make her route into the royal family as clean and as clear as possible. And as I say, I think she just threw it in their, in their faces at the end.
Yeah, well, it is remarkable. Twenty years now, as I say, of William, you know, since the news was broken of William and Catherine, um, William and Harry. Yeah. So when you were were working, did you did you did you get to meet them yeah. very often? Yeah. 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 What, what, what were they like as, as as boys? And do you think that could you ever see this 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 split this this dispute that they have ever, ever happening? Never in a month of Sundays would I have I would I have said that they were going to fall out. Um, Harry, when he was much younger, about five or six, whenever he was with his mother, he used to give the waiting photographers the fingers. You know, he used right. to stick two fingers up, and he was always chastised by Diana because he's a cheeky, he was a cheeky chappy. As the boys got older, uh, and I've seen them together, I've seen them on the ski slopes, they got on very, very well. And this is why I think that one of the things that Harry said in his book Spare, you know, about his father were so, so wrong. I mean, I watched the prince, the then prince, with his children, and he was as loving uh, to those boys as was Diana. Diana was much more extrovert. Um, you know, once in Canada, you know, the boys were on the Royal York Britannia. they just arrived. Uh, Diana and Charles had just finished a job. Diana walks up the gangplank. Charles is very polite. He's, he stands there and says hello to the captain, the first officer, the cook, you know, the first mate, whatever. Diana ignores them all and goes, um, walks, runs practically down the gangplank with her arms wide open and the boys rush up to her and give her a... That's the picture that made, you know, the newspapers all over the world. And poor old Charles is left looking like a lemon as he was in India when he didn't take her to the Taj Mahal and left her sitting alone there uh, while he was addressing a, a business meeting 500 miles away. He just didn't get those sort of things right. Uh, but the boys themselves were always very pleasant. I mean, I was there the day that uh, William passed his driving test, so it was great, great fun. Um, and so we, we got to see them on special occasions and they were always reasonably friendly. They'd all say hello. I mean, I remember in Canada when they both went to Can well, the, when they were in Canada, uh, it was like the Beatles had arrived. This was just shortly after Diana died, wasn't it? it was no, like... this, was be this was before. This was way before. Oh, right, this yeah. was way before Diana died. Uh, was it before Diana? I can't. I'm sorry. Well, whenever it was, the boys. It must have been after Diana died. The boys went up, and they were walking up to a, a, an event, and the screams. It was like the Beatles. Mm, you know, remember, it was just yeah. pop stars stuff. You know, and I was behind them, and Harry. Harry, Harry kept saying to William, raise your hand again, raise your hand again and see what happens. And every time, William's like an automaton <laughs> waving his hand. And of course, all these girls were just trying to rush forward. It was a fantastic thing. And they were really, really close. And this is what makes it it's so sad that they're now so far apart. I mean, if William, well, it's not if, but when William becomes king, I always believe that Harry would be one of his top advisors. I think that's out of the window now. Yeah. Right out of the window. It should be his wingman. It that, should that be. Was his, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his yeah. thing. And that's, that's what Diana thing. always wanted, the boys to remain as close as possible. They had each other, and it was them against the rest of the world. But, of course, now, you know, it's not going to happen.